sci-fi and fantasy short stories. The Extended Vacation by Don Lubov Chapter 1 Because of their skin color, they called themselves the Golden Ones. Their trip from Planet Higonte was now finishing the six-month voyage. When they were informed that their intergalactic spaceship was in its final approach to the vacation planet, cheering and singing broke out everywhere. Their ship was one of the new quantum cruisers. It whisked 20,000 passengers and crew silently through space at the speed of light. Its accommodations consisted of 540 person travel escape pods. The cheering and general jubilation continued as they entered the planet's atmosphere. This year's planet party was expected to be even better than last year's. As the planet offered vastly different kinds of scenery, they landed on a new locale each trip. Since the previous year's terrain was mountainous and cold, a hot, humid jungle was the current destination. Their technology had advanced to a level unheard of, nay, undreamed of in their entire history. Brain scans and wave transmissions rendered all recipients brilliant, healthy, and more than capable of handling current and future technology. It was understood and accepted that their species had peaked. There was no need to evolve any more. They were a success. The mile-long ship, the Quantum Voyager, descended quietly and smoothly to a three-mile, clear patch of land. The passengers rushed to the airlocks and disembarked in as orderly a fashion as their collective enthusiasm would allow. They were civilized, to say the least. At last, they thought. Vacation Central. Chapter 2 Apo and his sister, Nakia, ran the shore and allowed the gentle waves to caress their feet. Unlike on their planet, where two suns shone brightly, here only one sun prevailed. The clouds behaved as if they'd been rehearsing for years for this day. Cool, offshore breezes rolled in with a welcome regularity. The scenery and weather surpassed everyone's expectations. Their father, Hunabku, and their mother, Ishel, remained on the beach, either basking in the warm sun or strolling through the shallow surf. This was the vacation they had saved for, planned for, and dreamed of for years. This was the perfect time to vacation. Soon, Apo and Nakia would be old enough to go into pairing mode where they would each lock onto a compatible mate. They would then couple, procreate, work with the state on parenting, and move on to careers and self-exploration. As all golden people had photographic memories, there was no need for an external recording device. Anything experienced on this vacation could easily be brought up and projected in the form of a hologram. The children played liftoff, one of their favorite games. Find an object and, with only the power of your mind, raise it off the ground and move it to another location. The bigger and heavier the object, the bigger the win. Young and old were equally enthralled with the weather and the scenery. Those between these ages hiked the nearby hills and valleys. The weather inland was without equal. So perfect that the entire crew left the ship to join with the passengers in this celebration of nature. After some hours, Hunabku mentally beckoned to both children to come back to the beach for lunch. On the way back to the beach, they heard a low snarl coming from the dense underbrush. A large, black cat cautiously approached them. It got close enough for them to feel its hot breath. The animal leaped at the two teenagers, only to be frozen in midair and gently floated to the ground. One look from these happy kids, and it knew this prey was different. It slunk off into the jungle. The children and thousands of others descended to the sandy beach and shared a sumptuous buffet of prepared foods. Following lunch, they would all gather at the ship 
and unload their vacation luggage. Chapter 3 Day 1 went perfectly. The cost for the intergalactic trip and the months in space were worth every credit. Passengers and crew were thoroughly involved in the vacation spot, so involved that no one noticed the smoke and flames coming from the mighty ship's engines. By the time anyone realized what was happening, it was too late. Smoke and furious flames engulfed the entire fuselage. All their belongings, their intergalactic communication devices, and their long-term food storage went up in smoke. Thankful that there were no injuries or deaths, the travel party had to take stock of what they had brought ashore. Shackmole, the tour guide, had three previous vacation trips to the vacation planet under his belt. He showed no sign of panic at this dramatic turn of events, and calmly organized work groups and kept the people busy. Everyone understood that if they pooled everything they had with them, the odds of making it until next year when new vacationers would arrive were good. What they didn't know at the time was that one year on their planet was equal to 5,000 years on the third planet from the sun. It was during this 5,000-year period that some of the Golden Ones met and intermarried with the locals. The Elders were to become known by all in this region as gods, and they were worshipped accordingly. These ancient ones from the past used their power to build tall pyramids and mighty cities. They ventured far and wide during this 5,000-year period. They covered a vast territory that would become Mexico, Central and South America, and the North American Southwest. Others trekked all the way to the eastern seaboard. A few crossed the ocean and settled in what was to become North Africa, the Middle East, and the Far East. Wherever they traveled, they studied the local cultures, some eventually intermarrying with the locals. They taught them of their advanced ways. However, by living on this planet and interbreeding, each new generation spawned retained less and less of the old ways. Moving heavy objects with the power of one's mind was becoming a lost ability for the new mixed-race offspring. The same for telepathic communication. They had learned to live off the land and knew that the mixed-borns, if not transported to their home planet soon, would have trouble competing on their home planet. Remembering their true origin, almost all of the original vacationing party returned to Higonte when the next vacation cruiser landed. Their offspring would not be left behind to devolve with all the other locals. Their gifts to this vacation planet were many. Their building style came from dividing the carbon molecules into five separate tetrahedrons, or pyramids, some of these large structures were stepped, and others smooth-sided. Pyramids and other buildings were used for religious purposes and as resting places for the Golden Ones. These giant structures were to last beyond their vacation stay. Their teachings also lasted well beyond their stay here. Their legacy lives on to this day. They and their creations remain with us to this day. They spread out to all parts of Earth, from the mountains of Nepal and Tibet to the deserts of the Middle East. They and their teachings filtered down through the ages to this day. Geographically spread rather evenly, these eight Golden Ones taught life's lessons to all ready to listen. This period of exploration, intermingling, and teaching went on for the entire 5,000-year extended vacation. It began in what we now call 18,000 B.C. and ended about 13,000 B.C., when the call to meet at the new landing spot went out. By that time, the intermingling and intermarriage 
had been extensive. Of the original 20,000 vacationers and crew, all but eight golden ones elected to return to Higonte on the next galactic starship. Through the centuries, they took new names. One whose name was unpronounceable to humans took the name Zoroaster. Another chose to be called Siddhartha, Moses, Jesus, Lao Tzu, Socrates, Rumi, and Gandhi were names picked for the remaining golden ones. Their teachings were spread far and wide, but unfortunately, most of Earth's inhabitants continue to choose not to hear them. Don has written for Yahoo Voices, Beliefnet.com, and Kinja.com. His writings have been published in various magazines and books. If you'd like to find out more about them, you can find information on his website, donlubov.com, or down in the description. In addition, he has written about spirituality and stress relief since 1971. Ten years successfully teaching his Six-Step Path at College of Central Florida Senior Center, MTP College, and the Lifelong Learning College in the Villages, Florida. He has taught his unique brand of meditation to over 2,000 people who subsequently have achieved a level of inner peace. He has taught his six-step path for stress reduction for the past 12 years at Dell Webb and three local colleges. Hey guys, so this story hits on a topic that I find absolutely fascinating. Humans, as we know them, have been around on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years. Some estimate 200,000, others say 300,000. It's kind of hard to tell with fossil records. Either way, we only have about 5,000 years of recorded history, which this story is indicating started at about the time these people arrived. That could explain the sudden outburst of written language and all these other things that we can attribute. Personally, I like to think that human intuition has built everything that we have. But a lot of people like to think something similar to this story, and I find that an interesting concept as well. Either way, what happened before 5,000 years ago, we have no idea. Over 90% of human history is a complete blank. I just find that so fascinating. We have all this history, everything that we can go and read about, and it's a blip in human existence, which is a blip in the existence of the Earth, which is a blip in the existence of the solar system, the galaxy, the universe. Recorded history is basically a period at the very end of war and peace. That is just insane to think about, and it blows my mind. <laughs> anyway, that's my nerd session for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a comment if you're on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast, I could always use more reviews on Apple Podcasts. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.